Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me is Michael Romer, Managing Partner of Romer DeBass, to discuss if the Manhattan luxury real estate market is poised to rebound in the midst of a pandemic. Michael, it's great to see you as always. Welcome back to Trade Talks. Uh, thank you, Jill. Thank you for having me. And a densely populated cities such as Manhattan experienced an exodus of residents opting for more rural areas. Does this excess inventory present opportunities for buyers? Absolutely. You know, there is a there is still a glut of inventory on the market right now. And it's a it's a great opportunity for somebody who's looking to buy because you're looking at a situation where you have high inventory and then you have some price decreases. You're looking at average price decreases of you know six to eight percent on average, and in some cases much higher. So it's creating this opportunity, and it's a bit of a perfect storm where you have excess inventory coupled with price uh, decreases, which creates this opportunity for individuals either here in New York or throughout the country. Where can the steepest discounts be found? Well, the right now, the steepest discounts that you're seeing are on the higher end. Uh, so you're looking at properties that are valued at $4 million and up. You're looking at discounts in the area of 20 to 30%. I have a client who I just put into contract in recent weeks and you were looking at a price drop from ask to what he actually signed at that was close to a million dollars. So at that higher level, it's really interesting because we're seeing more units transferring in the New York City area in the ultra high end market uh, than ever before. And I'm glad you brought that up. Let's talk about demographics, because if you still want that, that younger first time home buyer like millennials, for example, to rebuild the city back up, it, it's still a high barrier to entry. And then my second question to that is, is it mostly foreign buying that you're seeing? Yeah, so when you're looking at what's going on right now, so you have this spike um, in interest. We are in the midst of a rebound. So in my opinion, we are in the rebound. There are more transactions happening on a daily basis than we've seen in a very long time. And I am really grateful for that. You know, the term exodus gets thrown around a lot. But New York City, uh, I always bet on New York City because it always does recover. And New York City real estate is one of the safest and best investments over time. So when you're looking at this, you have people who are leaving. And potentially, these are people who are leaving for tax reasons or other reasons, or maybe monetary reasons because of the pandemic. I mean, it obviously impacted a lot of people. But New York City is really interesting because real estate tends to recycle, where you have individuals who are leaving their uh, townhouses, co-ops, and condos, but there's somebody behind willing to come in. And those people are looking at it right now. You mentioned your first-time home buyers or folks who are looking at properties valued under $4 million. There's an opportunity right now because you can see some price decreases and we are still looking at record low interest rates. So these mortgage interest rates, which have gone up a bit in recent months, are still low. So it still is a prime time to buy. But are you continuing to see a lot of foreign money that's coming in? Because that kind of was the trend where there were parking assets. Real estate is, is relatively safe in New York, as you had mentioned. You need to put yourself money somewhere. The amazing thing right now, and look, we're known as a law firm here at Romer DeBoss in New York for representing foreign buyers. We are getting very to little activity from foreign buyers. This is all predominantly U.S.-based um, either homeowners, potential homeowners, or investors wanting to actually seize an opportunity. The really interesting thing right now is where are the foreign buyers and when are they coming? So when people say that this is a balloon that's about to, to pop, I disagree because right now this is all being done with local money. Typically speaking, historically, the foreign buyer has driven the New York City condo market. When you're looking at maybe accounting for 20 to 25% of the market, Right now, that money has not come. And there's a lot of forces to that, but something to keep an eye on. With the amount of money that's being spent at the federal level, you're going to be looking at some currency valuation issues. And I think you're going to see people in other countries now seeing the opportunity because they're going to get more bang for their dollar or equivalent currency in our market. Yeah, it's an interesting point you make. And I also think with a coordinated vaccination strategy and so forth, they'll think of New York and the United States safe again at some point too. Well, that's the other piece of this because there's always psychology when you're talking about real estate and consumer confidence has to be there. 
especially at the foreign level. You know, you were looking at a situation where the foreign buyer just simply was not interested in coming here. They were not interested in moving their money. But one of the reasons, especially at the higher end, was they knew the bottom had not, you know, had not come yet. So they saw it as an opportunity to just wait, wait for prices to come down. And I think over the next few months, you will see an influx of foreign money. All right, Michael, great to catch up as always. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. And thanks for joining me. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Thank you, Jill.